here on uh, this Tuesday morning, I found myself uh, outside in some local woodland. Um, Jesus was actually walking through the countryside. I doubt it looked much like this. The Judean uh, wilderness was much more rugged and much less green. But anyway, he's outside walking with his disciples. Uh, and a rather odd incident happens in Mark chapter 2, 23, uh, towards the end of the chapter. It's about the Sabbath. Jesus makes a remarkably profound comment as he's having an argument with the religious leaders. Uh, they're arguing that on the Sabbath day, a holy day for Jews, uh, his disciples are, are breaking the Sabbath laws. You can read about the incident uh, there in Mark. And Jesus makes this statement. Remember, he says to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And actually, that's quite an important insight into an institution which was very important to the Jewish nation, the Sabbath. Uh, and he's saying, actually, the purpose of the Sabbath is not that human beings do what they can to make the Sabbath work, but the Sabbath was designed to help human beings work better. You better get it in the right order. The institution of the Sabbath is not there for its own sake, but is there to help human flourishing, to create periods of rest from work, to a, create a different sort of day, a rhythm of the week, which human beings need to flourish, balance in life. Uh, and Jesus is saying something very helpful to us in these uh, times about the importance of people and his love for humanity and the fact that institutions are meant to serve human beings and not the other way around. Today I want us to pray especially for human beings, real people who are cleaning the floors in hospitals and care homes Physiotherapists, nurses, doctors, consultants working on what's sometimes called the front line in this war on coronavirus. I want to pray uh, for them as human beings, expressing uh, our love for them because of the stresses and strains they and their families must feel under, particularly if they're right up against people suffering with COVID-19. But the important thing is, and it worries me a bit, this focus on the NHS. The NHS, the National Health Service, is just that. And a motto that keeps telling us to protect the NHS, as we were told in the beginning of this uh, lockdown, might be okay as an emergency measure to stop it being overwhelmed. We can see the logic of that. But we must be very careful that this doesn't continue on into the future. Uh, why is that? Because actually it's not our job long term to protect the NHS, it's the NHS's job to protect us. A and um, honestly it makes me a bit nervous this Thursday night clapping for the NHS. I don't want to clap an institution, of course I want to applaud brave uh, nurses and care workers in, in care homes around the country or, or doctors. Of course you want to applaud and praise and thank individuals but the NHS seems to have been elevated to the level of a religion, which we worship. Now, there are great dangers in that. Uh, one of the dangers is, as Jesus pointed out, that the NHS exists for the benefit of the patient, not the other way around. And uh, I've noticed already, actually, a number of things happening with NHS structures, which imply that we're doing our best to protect the NHS, and it happening in a way that disadvantages the patients. And so as we go forward, there is a danger that the NHS will begin to exist for its own sake and will be asked to make changes and do things to make things easier for the institution. Well, surely the institution should be increasingly configured to meet the needs of the patient. That's why it exists. And the other danger, of course, is that it becomes impossible to critique the National Health Service. Before all this happened, you could speak to endless doctors who'd got enormous frustrations with the NHS and the inefficient way that it often worked. If that's true, how do we criticise it now? How do we improve it? If the only thing you're allowed to say about the NHS is how wonderful it is. Now, I don't want to be negative here. We want to affirm and pray for individuals in that context. But as Jesus said, the Sabbath was designed in order to benefit humanity, not the other way round. Sometimes people in churches have even complained to this, about this to me in the, in the past. They say, the church wants my money and my time and my energy and my gifts. It's almost as if 
I exist as a Christian to bless the institution of the church, which actually the purpose of the human institution of the church is to encourage my fellowship with God and to encourage my Christian witness. It exists to help me be the Christian I need to be. Sometimes we feel uh, in church life as if we're, we're just, as it were, fodder for the church to get its various meetings done and its institutions fulfilled. Now, of course, um, we don't feel that now in lockdown because we're rarely having any meetings and uh, in, in some ways many of us are finding that a bit of a relief. So today, two things. Try and remember that institutions, the health service, the government, a trade union, a political party, all these human institutions are meant to promote human flourishing, not the other way round. And secondly, to say, it's the individuals that matter. So let's be praying for, let's care for, let's think about those people who really are struggling in a care home today to provide loving care for someone with advanced dementia the challenges of incontinence, the anxieties of ageing and the, the loss of dignity which so many feel. And all on top of that, corona. Let's pray today for those on this front line, that those individuals will be strengthened in their personal lives and in their family lives.